What's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Modern Hobbyist. Today I'm going to be switching my Anycubic i3 Mega from the factory firmware to a version of the open source Marlin firmware. Let's get started. Welcome back everybody, I'm Charlie with Modern Hobbyist. Before we get started, make sure to subscribe and click that bell icon so you don't miss any of my future videos. If you've seen my past couple videos, then you'll know that I recently got an Anycubic i3 Mega 3D printer and I've been working on upgrading it for quite some time. It's getting pretty close to perfect, but before I call it complete, I wanted to give the Marlin firmware a shot. In case you don't know, Marlin is an open source firmware for RepRap style 3D printers based on the Arduino platform. Today, Marlin actually drives most of the world's 3D printers. I want to give a huge shout out to Dave Romero for the immense amount of work that he put in getting this firmware to work on the i3 Mega, as well as the incredibly detailed instructions that he put together. None of this would have been possible without his work, so be sure to check out his profile, which I'll have linked in the description. You might be asking yourself, why would I want to switch to the Marlin firmware anyways? What benefit do I get from doing this? And to answer that question, there's a whole laundry list of benefits that you'll get from switching to the Marlin firmware. Mesh bed leveling, PID tuning, thermal runaway protection, filament changing. These are just a few of the many benefits that the Marlin firmware offers over the stock Anycubic firmware. On the other hand, as of right now, one notable feature that you'll lose with the Marlin firmware is the ability to resume a print after power loss. So if power loss is common in your area, this might not be the best choice for you. With that in mind, be sure to keep an eye on Dave Ramiro's work because I'm sure he'll have a fix for that in no time. On top of all this, if the Marlin firmware ends up not working out for you, you can always just revert back to the Anycubic firmware and get your printer back to square one. If all of that still sounds good to you and you still want to go forward with updating your firmware to Marlin, then let's get started on the installation. I'm going to go ahead and show you two different ways that you can flash this firmware onto your printer. I'll show you how you can flash Marlin from Cura, and for you Octoprint users, I'll also show you a plugin that you can use to flash the firmware directly from Octoprint's interface. To start, go to the Thingiverse link in the description to download the hex files for the firmware. The Files folder will contain three different versions of the hex file, one for users that haven't touched anything on their printer yet, meaning they still have the stock stepper motor drivers installed and one for the people that have swapped out the stepper motor drivers while still on the original firmware, which required you to flip the direction of the motor connectors. And the last one is for people that have swapped the stepper motor drivers, but didn't flip the direction of the motor connectors yet. Next, connect your computer to your printer with the USB cable that came with the printer and open up Cura. Click the dropdown at the top left of Cura and click Manage Printers. From here, select the printer that you want to update and select Update Firmware. This will open up another window where you'll need to select Upload Custom Firmware and select the hex that you want to flash. In my case, I swapped out the drivers while still on the original firmware and my motor connectors are flipped, so I'll grab the hex for the reverse connectors. Click Open and it will start flashing the new firmware. When that completes, go ahead and power cycle your printer and you should be able to tell right away if it worked or not because Marlin will no longer play the Anycubic startup tune. If you don't hear the startup tune, then your printer now has Marlin firmware installed on it. If you want to install it from Octoprint, go to the Octoprint interface and open up the plugins manager. Search for the firmware updater plugin and install it. Once you've restarted Octoprint, open the firmware updater plugin from the settings pop-up and click the browse button to select the hex file you want to upload. If you click the Flash from File button now, you'll see that you need to select a flash method before it will work. To do this, click the Settings wrench on the top right of the pop-up. For the flash method, you'll need to check which one your printer needs in the documentation for this plugin. For the i3 Mega, you'll need to select AVR Dude, which will open up several other options. For the MCU, select AT Mega 2560 from the dropdown, which is the motherboard the i3 Mega has. Now all I need to do is enter the path to the AVR Dude executable on Octoprint, which I haven't installed yet. To do this, open up a terminal of your choice and SSH into the Raspberry Pi. Once you're in, run sudo apt-get update. 
With that complete, I can install AVRDude with the command sudo apt-git install AVRDude. Once the installation has completed, use the which command to show the package location. Copy this location and head back to the Octoprint interface. Go back to the firmware updater plugin, set the path to the executable, and select wiring for the AVR programmer type. Save those settings and click flash from file. If you have everything configured correctly, it should complete successfully and you should be able to reboot your printer and see that you now have the Marlin firmware installed on it. The only thing left to do is to run two simple G-code commands to configure your EEPROM on the printer correctly. You can do this using Cura if your printer is connected via USB, or you can use the Octoprint interface. With Cura, click on the Monitor tab and send the command M502 followed by M500 to the printer. M502 just resets the printer to the factory settings, and M500 saves those settings to EEPROM. If you're using Octoprint, go to the Terminal tab and enter the same two commands to configure the EEPROM correctly. The last step that's strongly recommended after flashing the Marlin firmware is to calibrate all of your stepper motors, especially the extruder motor. This process isn't hard, but I think I'm gonna cover it in greater detail in another video, so be sure to check that out. But for now, that's it. That's how you can flash Marlin onto your 3D printer using either Cura or Octoprint. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of this video or if you have any suggestions for me to implement. Also, be sure to smash that like button and subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos and click the bell icon so you get notified every time I upload. Otherwise, that's all for now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.